Hello everyone, it's Mr. Roberts here. I think, I hope most of you will remember me. Um, and I'm gonna show you today, as part of your enrichment, how to draw a portrait. And a portrait is just a picture of a face. And there are different types of portrait. You can have a portrait in profile, and that's where we look at the picture of the side of the face from the side, and a front-on portrait. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're looking at a picture of the face, face on, front on. So, you can do a self-portrait, a portrait of yourself, or you can do a portrait of somebody else. Now, I am not going to do a picture of myself. I'm gonna do a picture of my son. Um, number one, I don't wanna be looking at my face for that long. Um, and, but there is a good reason for that. It's because it's actually a lot easier to draw older people like me because we have lots and lots of wrinkles and I've got a load of beard that takes up most of the face. So it's actually harder to draw younger people because you've got less lines on your face and lots of space. And space on a face is harder to draw. So you're in for a bit more of a challenge just because you're younger. So I thought I'd set that challenge for myself as well. So I'm going to draw my son who isn't wrinkly yet. But you will be one day. And um, another disclosure, I don't consider myself an artist at all. I'm not an artist. I'm quite a good drawer and I am able to draw reasonable portraits and that's because I use the strategies that I'm going to share with you today. And we're going to be using something called a face cannon. Now, if you read that on the enrichment menu, and you thought, oh, face cannon, that sounds really exciting. Perhaps it's a weapon from Fortnite or something. You're wrong, I'm afraid. A face cannon is just a grid that we use to position the features of the face correctly. Because this is the most important thing. Step one, when we're drawing a portrait, when we're drawing a picture of a face, is that we get the features in the right place. And after being a teacher for many, many, many years, I know that there are a few misconceptions about where those features sit on the face. So I'm going to cover those with you. Okay, so today we're going to be learning how to draw a portrait. You're probably going to do a self-portrait and I'd encourage you to try and draw yourself. I'm not. I'm going to draw my son. And so we're going to do a portrait and we're going to look at how to position the features of the face correctly in our picture. We're also going to look at some of the key features on the face and how to draw them. Because quite often when we're drawing a portrait, we draw what we imagine they look like rather than really, really looking and actually drawing and representing what we see. So we're gonna develop that skill as well. But very importantly, you're gonna get much better at drawing portraits today because you are gonna be reflective. You're gonna use the competence of reflective to improve your drawing. Okay, well, that's enough of me rattling on. Should we start doing some drawing? That's why we're all here, isn't it? Okay, right, let's get started. Right, so this is all that you need to take part in today's portrait enrichment. So what have I got? I've got a picture of the person that I want to draw. Hopefully you've got a picture of yourself that you're going to be studying and looking at. Um, this is a face on picture. Okay, so it's really important you've got that and not one of you looking to the side or slightly off, looking directly at the camera. Now I've printed mine off, um, but you don't have to. You can work from a device if you would rather. I'm just trying to reduce my screen time, so I've printed that off. Um, I've also got a ruler, and you only need one pencil. I don't know why I've got two, um, but I've got two. I think it's because I didn't want to have to sharpen in the middle of the recording. And I've got about three pieces of paper. I've also got a rubber, and the reason I've got this is just to show you. You don't need a rubber, get rid of it, okay? If you make a mistake, you can probably incorporate that into the final picture. We only use a rubber as a last resort, okay? We're gonna use faint pencil strokes in order to build up our picture. So any little mistake that we make, it's absolutely fine. I'm sure we can build it in. Please do try not to use a rubber, okay? And accept the mistakes. I don't want anyone at home getting really frustrated and manage your expectations. So today, we're beginning learning how to draw a self-portrait. This won't look like an exact photograph of your face or an exact copy of the face that you're drawing. 
and I'm going to be honest with you, the pitch that I draw is not going to look exactly like my son Wilfred. Hopefully it will look like a face. Okay, so let's manage our expectations and do the best that we can do. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a circle. Now, there'll be lots of you at home saying, but heads aren't circles, heads are egg shape. I know that, um, but we're going to just start by doing a circle and we'll build up the shape of the head from there. Now, it's an approximate circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, no compasses. Okay, I'm using soft pencil strokes in order to build up the rough shape of a circle. And then I find the middle. There you go, I'm going to mark that faintly. And I can check that's about right with my pencil. There you go. So I can use the pencil as a measuring guide. Just tidy it up a bit. Okay. And now I'm going to draw a line across the middle, cut my circle in half. Then I'm going to find a kind of quarter way line. So halfway between that midpoint and the edge. And again, so I split my circle up into quarters. Okay, it's time to pause the video and have a go at this yourself. You don't need to write down the fractions as long as you've drawn the lines. Okay, so it's gonna start looking a bit more like a human face um, rather than just a big circle. So I'm gonna make a little mark about a thumb's distance from the bottom of the big circle. That's gonna be the middle of another circle now that we're gonna draw. And I'm gonna measure that with a pencil. Find the bottom, there you go. And now I'm gonna draw a smaller circle. Okay, use it from the bottom third of the big circle. It's a bit smaller than the top circle. And actually, it starts to look a bit like a, a chimp or an orangutan. With the big round muzzle coming off the main part of the face. And actually, they're our ancestors, so we do share a lot of bone structure that's quite similar. But I promise you, by the time we've finished, it won't look like we're drawing a monkey. So, I'm going to draw a line across the middle, and you can see my lines aren't perfect, and that's okay. You shouldn't be using a ruler. Alright. Now, we've got the basic proportions of the face. So, if we look at the top line, that's roughly where everybody's hairline is. Now we'll ignore the line below that and we'll go straight to this one, the bottom line. This is the eyes. Now a lot of you will be shocked by that and you'll think, no, the eyes should be on the one above. But that's not right. Now we've got the nose as the bottom of the circle and we have the mouth and the lips in the middle of the bottom circle. And finally at the bottom, we have the chin. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and I want you to have a go at this yourself. You don't need to write the labels. Okay, well I suppose it does still look a bit like a monkey, so let's make it more like the shape of a human face. So I'm going to just sort of indicate the outline of a person's face here. And basically it's really just filling in these gaps. Now you need to really look at your picture because this is where your face will start to take shape. And really, it's all about the kind of chin we have. So really look at the picture of your face and make sure you get that chin right. Oh, there you go, that's a lot more facey, isn't it? Right, pause the video and you have a go at that now. Your turn. Okay, so it's time to indicate the eyes with a dot there. And that dot goes somewhere between the edge of the face, halfway between the edge of the face and the middle of the face. There you go, you can see. And this is just rough for now, we'll adapt it. So when we've got the inside edge of the eye, the tear duct. There you go, we all know where that is. And uh, then the outside edge of the eye. There we go. Now, we'll measure the eye using the pencil. Okay, and the width of the eye is the same as the distance between the eyes. So, you'll know if you've got it right, if the distance between the eyes is the same as the width of the eye. Right, and actually, the middle of the eye also corresponds with the edges of the mouth. 
then the tear ducts correspond with the edges of the nose. So before we start drawing on our picture, I want us to practice uh, drawing some of the key features on a separate piece of paper first. It's really important that we don't just draw what we think these features look like. And we really look at our picture to see what's unique about our own features. So often when I ask people to draw an eye, they draw it all perfect like this. So they've got the really even, and then the iris, the circle bit in the middle, there you go. You can see all of the iris, but that's not actually the case really in our eyes. So I, Wilfred's eyes, I notice, have got a fairly even curve at the top. But then when we look at the bottom of the eye, the bottom line of the eye, you see it's not even at all, but it's not an even arch. In fact, it goes up a bit here after the eye duct, and then it kind of swoops down, but only a shallow swoop. There we go, to the edge. And again, I'm using faint lines so that I can build up the shape. And that's much more accurate, isn't it, for the shape of the eye. Now, sometimes if you're drawing an older person's eye, you wouldn't have that even swoop at the top of the eye. It tends to go up and then it tends to be almost a corner as it swoops across. But the bottom is, tends to be the same. Sometimes if someone's very old, it would droop down a bit more. There you go. So the shape of the eye depends on how old the person is. And then you have the eyelid. There we go. And again, that doesn't just follow the exact curve of the top of the eye, I can see. So make sure that you're really looking at your picture to see the exact shapes, the exact lines that make up the shape of your eye. And then we have the iris. Now we, we can't ever really, unless someone's very shocked, see the whole iris. So actually, we only see part of it. And it's when I've done this, I can see that my dot is not in the correct space for the, the pupil. And then everybody's got some sort of, not eye bag, but line underneath their eye. And that's because our eye is a ball shape and it sticks out. So. It doesn't mean that we're old and wrinkly, it just means that we've got an eyeball, it's a sphere. And okay, so if we also look, because our eyes are glossy and shiny and wet, they reflect the light a lot. So, I've indicated that there. Now, I'm going to draw the black of my pupil, which is just a hole in my eye. It's covered by a lens to stop things getting inside, to be able to help us focus. And it's a black hole. There you go. And then we draw the lines of the iris. So if you look very closely at your iris, you'll see it's made up of lots and lots of tiny little muscles which can contract to make your, your pupil bigger if you need to see in the dark and let more light in, or smaller if you're in lots of light and you need to let less light in. Okay, lots and lots and lots of thin uh, muscles. And I'm going to shade around the edge because they're usually darker around the edge of the iris. Uh, but I'm going to go around a few times. And these are like spokes on a bicycle. And please do turn the page. It's really helpful, rather than trying to twist your wrist. So we're learning to draw an accurate portrait and not a cartoon. So when you're coming to do the eyelashes, it's really important that you don't just do lots of really big eyelashes. When we're doing this portrait, we're trying to create an accurate representation of ourselves, not necessarily what we wish we looked like. Okay, so make sure that we really look and indicate exactly as they are. In the second of these workshops, the next, next week, we'll be looking at shading and you'll see how that really, really improves the quality of, of your picture and makes it look more three-dimensional.
But what's important when you're practicing drawing your eye is that you're looking to see what you like about what you've done so that you can repeat that when you come to put it on your picture and what you think you could do to improve what you've done so that you can make sure it's better when you come to add it to your picture. So make sure you're reflecting on your practice picture. Okay, so now it's time to add the eyes to our, our actual picture. Now when I looked at the um, ones I drew as a practice, I thought the eyelashes I drew underneath were just a bit too uniform and they weren't detailed enough. They didn't look enough like the ones in the picture that I'm copying. Okay, so I'm going to really work to improve that when I come to doing it on my actual picture. Now, I've sped my video up and chopped and cut bits out, so don't try to draw along with me. Watch what I'm doing when it's my turn, then pause and you have a go. It's your turn. And when you come to draw the other eye, don't just repeat exactly the same as you did on the right side. Make sure you really look at the eye, because the chances are they're not exactly symmetrical and they will look slightly different. And also, I'm going to remind you again, turn the page so that it's easier for you to get the angles and the flicks and the, the, the strokes that you need to draw accurately. Okay, so once the both eyes have come together, um, I'm going to indicate the hair uh, because on Wilfred you can't really see the eyebrows, so it's just helpful for me to know where the hair will sit. Now, many of you will have much, much shorter hair, and uh, so that won't be covering up so much of your forehead, and the hairline will sit on that line indicated at the top. Okay, so now we're going to explore drawing the nose, um, and quite often people will represent the nose with a triangle. And I guess that's the approximate shape of the nose, but actually, if we really look at the nut nose and think about what we can actually see, we can't see those clear straight lines, can we? Another thing that people tend to do is draw big great holes in the face for nostrils. Well, nostrils are holes in the face, but if we do them like this, unprecisely, it, we can give ourselves a bit of a piggy nose, can't we? Okay, so what I want you to do is really look at your picture and see what are the clear lines you can see, and only draw those. Don't draw in lines that you think are there. So there you go, that's the line indicating where the nose will sit. And I'm gonna really look and think, what, is, what are the shape of the nostrils? Because they're the most prominent thing I can see. There you go, and they're kind of this shape, aren't they? And make sure you're really looking back at your picture because both nostrils won't look exactly the same. And now, of course, another big part of our nostrils is the outside kind of case. There you go. So look at the exact shape of that. And Wilfred's are like this, they're not just a straight curve. And then, of course, you have the end of your nose, which you can indicate, but it's not a line, is it? We'll be looking at how to show that better when we do shading. There we go. But there we go, and it's starting to look a little bit like a nose. So pause the video and it's time for you to have a go. Practice before you draw it straight onto your picture. And then you can reflect. What do I think I did well? What do I think I can improve? Okay, so it's time to draw the nose onto our picture now. Okay, so I'm going to start with the nostrils as I did before. There we go but just the same as I did before. And you can see the tear ducts indicate the edge of the noses, the nostril. So there you are. And I keep looking back to my picture to make sure that what I'm drawing is as close as I can manage to uh, my actual photograph and not just what I'm imagining.
and it's just faint little lines to show the tip of the nose, indicate the tip of the nose and the bridge of the nose. Don't do big lines to show the whole outline because they don't actually exist if you look at the photograph of your face. Uh, the lines really do they? And the nose will take much more shape when we come on to do the shading in a second workshop. Okay, so just indicate now. Well, that was my turn. Now pause the recording and you have a go. Right, so we're going to have a go at drawing the lips now. And I want you to really look at the picture and make sure you're drawing what you actually see. So none of these kind of cartoon lips we see like that. No, 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 no. Um, also, quite often in cartoons we see really big smiles, don't we? And all really big sad faces. But um, no, our lips don't look like that at all. So if we look at our lips, they follow only a very, very slight curve like this. And now look how the bottom lip kind of swoops off the kind of deeper inside line of the, of the lips, the opening of the mouth. There you go. So you indicate the bottom lip and then the top lip is almost like a straight line across. But we've got that dip in the middle. Okay, the top lip tends to be darker because it's more in the shade and the bottom lip tends to be a bit lighter because it tends to protrude more, stick out more. Okay, so get that just right. Really look at your picture. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken the inside, the opening bit, and I'm gonna use faint lines. There you go, to give my lips shape. They're curved lines. Okay, and watch the angle that I'm doing the lines on the top lip. Okay, it's darker towards the middle, towards the opening, lighter towards the middle of the bottom lip, darker at the edges. And now we've given our lips some real shape. Okay, so now it's your turn to practice on a different piece of paper, your lips. Okay, remember it's really important that once you've practiced drawing them on a separate piece of paper that you reflect on them. What have you done really well and what could you do to improve them when you come to draw them on your actual picture? So pause the video and have a go yourself. So now we're going to add the, uh, some lips to our actual picture and I hope that you've really taken account of what you did really well and you want to keep in this picture and the thing about your last practice picture that you want to try and improve and make even better. So for me it was that I made the lips a bit too dark and feminine. Um, these were a bit too big um, and it wasn't quite the right smile that he's pulling in the actual photograph. So I'm going to try and improve that this time. Now the um, edges of the lips should be in line with the pupils and you can see I measured that out uh, before I started. Okay, so that's all of the main features of the face in place now. And so I'm going to go around the edge and really get the shape of Wilfred's face right. Um, because of course we all have different shaped faces. Some of us have rounder faces, some of us have square jaws, some of us have pointy jaws. And of course getting the hair right is, is really important. So there we go, there's the ear. Don't forget the ears. There we are. And now that does look like a person. Oh, phew, I am glad. There you go, a few little lines in the ears. And now I'm gonna really build up the hair. Um, so we've all got different types of hair. If you've got curly hair, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you don't sit it on top of the head, that you come right down to that hairline that we indicated at the start. Okay, so. Wilfred's got lots of swooping hair, so I'm going to do that. And this involves 
um, making sure that our pencil is going in the direction that the hair is swooping in. So if you've got curly hair, you're going to be doing lots and lots of swirls with your pencil. If you've got straight hair, your pencil will be moving in straight lines, but in the direction that the hair moves in, so that you're really showing that. draw a bit of uh, neck and some body so it doesn't just look as though his head's floating in space. There we go. And of course then you want to go round and add all the finishing little touches. Just add a bit more depth and texture to your picture. And now here's the finished product. As you can see, it doesn't look exactly like my son Wilfred, but it's not bad. And when we do the next workshop and we add the shading, we'll see the face really come alive. So now what I want you to do is have a go yourself, obviously, and create your own portrait. And then I'd like you to use this Padlet page to upload and share your portrait as part of the gallery. But don't just put your picture on there. Make sure you look at the other pictures of other people because it might inspire and give you ideas. Leave them a nice comment, something you really like about their picture. And we probably won't be leaving any even better riffs, just those of what you think they've done really well. Thank you so much, and I look forward to having a look on that Padlet page myself, and I know other members of staff will be too, to see your amazing pictures. Don't upload your pictures onto Seesaw, upload them here on the Padlet page so I can find them. You can also find a link to the Padlet page on the Richmond calendar too.